Today we'll go over expected monetary value or expected point value. Expected monetary value will be used by our finance team, whereas expected point value will be used by our design team. Let's go over expected point value first. Well, let's say I have two prototypes, and in expected point value, I want to understand which one will get me the higher number of points. Well, I come to a decision whether I want prototype one or prototype two. And based on a test that I've taken, I know for a fact that prototype one at its best can take can make 30 points in two minutes. And it's in its weakest performance, prototype one can make 15 points in two minutes. Whereas if I look at prototype two, in its strongest, it can make 20 points in two minutes, whereas it can make 23 points in its weakest moment. So, which one should I pick? Uh, well, I also know for a fact that it can make 30 points in two minutes, but the chances of that happening is 60% based on the number of tests I've done. So let's say I've done 10 tests with prototype one, six of the times it's gotten either, uh, it's gotten 30 points, whereas four of the times it's got only 50 points. So, based on those tests, I know for a fact I can create a ratio of 60 to 40 based on my tests. Whereas, same thing goes for port type 2, but whereas it's the same thing, but it's just a 50 to 50 ratio, and that's obviously something that I made up just for this example to work out. So, what, how do we calculate which prototype is best compared to both, uh, when we're comparing both of them side by side. Well, what do I do? I look at prototype one, and I see that it could create 30 points, and it could create 30 points, but the chances of creating 30 points is 60%, so I would put that 60 over 100, whereas doing the same, and this is for strong, so, and for weak, it can do 15 points, but the chances of making 50 points is 40%. And if I calculate this correctly, I have 30 times 0.6, which equals to 18 and I have 15 times 0.4, which equals to 6. Let's do the same thing for prototype 2. I have my strong scenario and my weak scenario. In the strong scenario, I have, it can make 20 points, but the chances are 50-50, whereas the other one is 23 points, and the chances are 50-50. Right? So that would equal to 20 times 0.5, which equals to 10. That's so obvious. And then 23 times 0.5, which equals to 11.5. Out of these four numbers, I realized that 18 is my best chance. And 18 is the highest number. So the expected points it can make uh, 18 is the highest number and it goes under prototype 1. So prototype 1, the, uh, the chances are that it will make 18 points on an average if, uh, if we have an overall scenario of strong. So, which means that um, connections are working during competition between the field and the controller, the wiring is done correctly within the robot, the driver is driving correctly and has practiced beforehand. So taking all those confounding variables into account, I know that for a fact that prototype one will perform the best and the chances are higher that it will get on our average around 18 points. So, and that's the highest compared to all of them. So I know for a fact that prototype one is the way to go. Hi, we've gone over expected point value, now we want to go over expected monetary value which will be used by finance. So, 
let's say we're in the scenario where we want to either build a plant or we want to upgrade a plant. Where in this decision, and this is a decision node, this here is a decision node which is a box, but we have a decision of either upgrading which will cost us, let's say, uh, we're uh, a company and it'll cost us an investment of, let's say, uh, 120 million. Whereas this choice of either we could uh, build a plant costs us an investment of, let's say, around 100 million. And we know for a fact that our demand for each is different. And the demand to upgrade is 70%. And for a strong demand, because the market is always changing. And whether we need to upgrade or not, um, that decision will vary. So based on, the, based on the market and the market being strong, we know that this, uh, the chances of the market being strong is 70% and the market being weak is 30%. Whereas the same goes for building, where the more, uh, but the, let's say the chances for the market being strong versus weak is 60 versus 40 if we build. Now you might think that hey isn't the, isn't the chances going to be the same for to upgrade or to build whether the market is going to be strong or not? In this case we're looking on how the market will treat us as a company. So if we upgrade the chances of the market being strong, uh, strong and helping us is 70 percent if we upgrade and if the chances of the market helping us out uh, and being strong is 60% if we build. So, which one should we choose? Well, we should look at how much um, each scenario will give us back. What are, is our return on investment? So, let's say the return on investment if the market is strong is around um, 200 million, right? And the return on investment when the market is weak is 80 million. This is, let's say, 50 million. And we could say this is 20 million. Right? So, uh, to calculate which uh, decision we should make, we should look at um, first uh, the investment, so minus 200 million for let's say upgrade we do minus 200 million and we do plus this 200 million oh sorry this is 120 so I would have to erase that this is 120 and plus 200 million times 70 percent which is 0 0.7 so and this is in brackets right and this is for a strong market. Strong upgrade. And then we have weak market. And if we upgrade, we have minus 120 million plus we have 80 million on our return on investment. And that is multiplied by 0 0.3 because we have a 30% chance of having a weak market or 30% a chance where the market would treat us weakly. So at the end of the day, if I calculate this properly, I get so minus 120 plus uh, 140, which is equal to 20. 
and then this is equal to to minus 96. And if we look at the other scenarios where we have a strong and weak, and we have build, the same thing here. We have minus 100 million, minus 100 million. And in this case, we have a 60% chance of having a strong market with a return on investment of 50 million. So that's 50 million times 0 0.6 and you have uh, tw uh, a chance of 20 million return on investment with a, with a chance of 0 0.4 you have minus 70 and you have minus 92. Well, if you look at these, all these numbers, you see that this one's the highest, 20. And since 20 is the highest, this uh, the, the decision of having an upgrade is better. And that's the decision you want to make. Yep, and that's it.